Now let's look at some of the other forms that we have available to us in our new form editor. I'm going to create a new effect. Effect effect. I want effect 810. A linear effect again. So we have this default sine wave. We have a flat line. We have a ramp. So if we were to read this, right, it's going to fade from the lower limit of our scale to the upper limit of our scale. We have double-sided ramp, a triangle. So this is what an absolute effect would look like with the time at one and the dwell at zero. Right? It would fade up, fade up, not hold there, fade down, fade down. These sorts of graphs are great for applying to other parameters such as tilt and stuff like that as well. We have a step, a squared off ramp, and a bunch of other logarithmic curves, a couple other shapes. And then we've got these kind of flickery effects, right? We've got a couple square waves. And then at the bottom, we've got two random effects, right? So we've got a light random or a few point random is what it's called, and a many point random. And what's really neat about these is like a random channel selection, every time we select this, it's actually going to give us a new set of random points. So if you don't like this random, hit it again and it's going to give you a new random. Hit it again, it's going to give you a new random. So the question is, how random do you want it to be? And we can hit these graphs a couple times till we find stuff that we're happy with. So let's say we want to work on a flicker effect. Uh, let's see, let's find a graph that we like for flicker. Yeah, something like that works. So we've now got this graph. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. And now I can just throw this on the light. So this is one place where I can make a multi-multi-step uh, absolute effect with background values and percentages above the line and percentages below the line and have that work as a random effect. Um, but I can just really quickly go in here, grab a random graph that I like and have that working right away. Um, again, it's subject to our scale. So one other thing to note here is that our graph actually never gets to the top or the bottom of this graph. We don't ever touch the top or the bottom, which means we're never actually going to get to the maximum edges of that scale. So even if our scale is 25 points in this case, we're never going to get 25 above the baseline or 25 below the baseline. We'll probably stop around 22 or 23 just because of where this graph ends at the highest points. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw this on those same lights. And this is that random effect. It doesn't, you don't see it as much because it's running in a linear order because channel selection order that it's running in is linear, even though it's playing back a random flicker. And so to see um, more specifically what this flicker is doing by itself, let's, let's change its grouping to one. And now you can really kind of see it trace this graph up and down as it all flickers together. So already that's, that's pretty good. Um, if we wanted to go back to spread, it's going to run that effect. So now let's look how channel selection affects that. I'm going to grab those same pixels. I'm going to use an offset of random, and I'm going to reapply that effect. And now we have that flicker running randomly on them. That's pretty, it's already pretty good. I also apply that, say, on the back psych, because it's a linear effect and can apply on anything. So anything that shares those parameters anyway. So the back psych, hey, the back psych has intensity parameters. Let's go ahead and set that to 50% and apply that as well. You know, didn't do a random. Apply that a random. It's not quite as strong on the back psych right now. Eh, let's change our scale to 40. So we now have the same flicker effect running on both sets of these channels. So we've started down the path of building this great flicker effect. Say I want it to go a little deeper in more parts of this, I can come in here and I can affect this graph. So I'm going to click Edit on my Graph Editor. And let's say I want these points, I want them to go all the way to the bottom of my scale. We're not getting enough dark. I'm going to choose Select, uh, and I'm going to select this point here, and it turns red. And then I can move that up and down. So I'm going to grab my Move, and I'm going to use my Move Vertical Encoder, and I'm just going to move that all the way to the bottom. And maybe I want to do the same thing for this. I want to move that all the way to the bottom. And maybe here I want it to stay at the bottom a little longer. I want to edit this a little more. So I'm going to select all of my points using the Select All button here. 
and I am going to subdivide. So now it has actually put a point in between these points. So now I can come in here and I can select that point. I can move that down here as well. And I'm going to click apply and it's going to instantly, and you can already see there's a little more dark in those, uh, in those spaces there. Um, it's probably a little too abrupt for, for my taste, but I think it's a great example. Change my scale of 30 a little bit. So now we've got this form that we really, really like, uh, and it's a great start to a fire effect. So once I find a form that I like, I find an organic form that I like, I like to reuse it because I feel like it brings a cohesiveness to the effect. So I'm going to go ahead and label this fire intensity, and I'm going to copy this effect. Um, I could, you know, type it on the command line, effect 810, copy to 811. I can also do it via my direct select tiles. So I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call this color, fire color. And I'm going to come in this effect and by default, you can see we have intensity over time here. I want to change the parameter that I'm working with from intensity to green. So I can just tap on this parameter tile here on the right hand side and I'm going to go ahead and choose green. And now you see that we have posted green over time. There's no green in fire, you say. I agree. However, remember that this will only affect that single parameter. So if I take these two sets of fixtures, my bottom psych and my blades, and I make them orange, orange is a mixture of red and green. So now if I vary the amount of green that is in this, I'm going to go more or less yellow. Using those two sets of fixtures, I'm going to run my fire color. And I actually, I ran it linearly, so you're seeing that linear effect. I actually wanted to randomize that. Let's run it again. So now we're starting to see, we have this yellow orange flicker. I'm going to come in here, and I think the scale of 30 is a little much. It makes it a little too yellow. Let me change that scale to like, eh, seems like 10%. So now we're starting to get a little more subtle with it. We're just getting a little bit of variation. I can even probably bring it down a little less. There you go. And I'm just going to change the cycle time a little bit. All right, so now we're getting some variation in this. Now, obviously, there are two different types of fixtures. If I was doing this for a show, I may create a copy of this effect and apply it to the upper pixels and then use a separate copy of the effect for the back wall. But this is just one really quick way we can use the same form to get multiple results. So let's apply this to one more fixture type. And again, that's a benefit of linear effects or absolute effects is that they can apply to anything that shares that parameter set. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab some of my side wash fixtures. I'm going to bring them to full, Flip them up a little bit, zoom them, zoom them out a little bit. And I'm going to make copies of these effects because I want, I want to leave these ones alone. Uh, and this is something that I do quite frequently is I'll make copies of effects as I want to use them. Um, we're going to talk more about organizing your effects in a later video. I'm going to take my fire effect and I'm going to copy it to effect one. I'm going to take my fire color effect. I'm going to copy it to effect two. I have this separate bank of effects up here, and this is one way that I will often organize my effects uh, if I have multiple scenes and stuff like that, so that I have buckets to put things in. So I'm going to grab those side wash fixtures here, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to apply that intensity effect. And I'm actually going to keep, keep forgetting to randomize it, but I'm going to go ahead and randomize the fire. And of course, I have other randomization options available to me. You know, I probably want to come in here to my attributes, and I probably want to randomize the rate a little bit, maybe 100 through 200. So it's going to run at a rate of 100% of the rate to 200% of the rate. And maybe I want to do random groups, which are going to take random groups of channels, and actually random groups of channels to random points across this graph. So it's going to make it even more random. I'm going to bring that scale down a little bit. Make it not so hit you over the head. Okay. Now I'm going to go back into live. I'm going to grab that selection again. I don't apply that fire color effect. Notice that no channels were modified. 
Why are they not modified? Because if we remember, we put in this effect, we put green over time. These are CMY mixing fixtures, so I need to change this to something that those CMY mixing fixtures can understand. Again, linear and absolute effects can run on anything that share their same parameter sets. The pixel bars and the back psych are RGB fixtures. These happen to be CMY mixing fixtures. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change my green. I'm going to go ahead and change it to cyan. I go back into live, grab those same wash fixtures, make them orange. Now I'm going to apply that, that color effect. And you can see it's actually um, bringing the cyan up and down. Uh, we can actually also apply that to magenta, cyan and magenta. So now it's applying on two different parameters, the cyan and magenta. Right now we have to rerun that effect on it because it's only applying to cyan. So I'm going to grab those side washes, reapply that fire color. Now you can see it's flickering both the cyan and magenta. And I can come in here and I can adjust that scale. And you can see, again, it's not quite as subtle as I like, um, but it's already starting to give us that kind of nice flicker. Um, and we haven't had to remake a graph. And one more thing I like to do on things with fixtures with zooms is I'll actually take that same graph and I'll put it on the zoom parameter. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to copy that to there. So I'm going to copy effect 2 to effect 3. Um, and I'm going to label that zoom. I'm going to come in my effect and I'm going to tell the parameter to effect zoom. Now I have those side washes. They're zoomed. I've zoomed them out to about 26 degrees. If I apply that zoom to them, I'm going to use a random. Okay, so it's a bit hit you over the head until you get real subtle with it. So let me make it like 1%. And what, what I find you get is particularly when you're adjusting it, you can kind of see it at the guy on the table in the lower, uh, lower left-hand corner of the screen there, is you just get a little bit of shadow movement. And I find combined with these other two effects really makes for a convincing fire effect. But the nice thing is we find this form and the shape that we like once, and we reuse it over and over and over again. Um, so that's one of the many benefits of uh, using linear effects. Um, in other videos, we're going to discuss using linear effects uh, in other forms and fashions as well.